Praise the Lord. Come on, we can do better than that. The songwriter just said this morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt there. Uh, and we up in here acting like we got doubt going on this morning. But if you know you don't have no doubt and you feel like shouting, we don't need no music. Let's give God some praise uh, up in this house. Because uh, it could have been the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, delighted, and happy just to be here one more time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When I rose this morning... <laughs> I didn't have no doubt because I knew that the Lord was on my side and he brought me up to another day and I'm excited and delighted to give him some praise. I'm tired of worrying about what other folks do. I got to give him praise for myself and I thank him this morning for another privilege. I thank him this morning for another opportunity to say thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let let. If you're still in the land of the living, you got something to be thankful for. And I, I'm just I'm just excited because I realize God is still busy. God is still working in my life. God is still making a way. God is still opening doors. God is still using me as his instrument. And I'm glad about it. Mm, 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 mm. If you can't praise him now, <laughs> what you think you're going to do when you get to heaven, huh? Huh? Yeah, the songwriters say, this is just a rehearsal. <laughs> yeah, so you better get your practice in or, 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 or it's going to be too late after a while, huh? Let us, let us. Well, I had an announcement that I was going to make. First, I'll make it now, um, if you don't mind. Um, our brother, Daniel Edmonds, his name was Chuck, what we call him. Uh, from here at Third Baptist, he passed away, and um, we give you more information on how and when the service would take place. But meanwhile, we ask that you would pray for his family in their time of loss. And we all knew Chuck. Chuck loved the same. Huh? Even in the wheelchair, he loved the same. So we sort of gonna miss old Chuck. But pray for his family and the deacons will give you more information on when um, his service and homegoing service would take place. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to be here at this altar one more time in this pulpit to just try to give a word of encouragement to your people. We ask God now if you find anything that would hinder me from moving, using me. We ask that I will remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Take me out of self and use me as your instrument that I may be used by you and that you may get the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And for his name's sake, amen. You have your Bibles. The scripture today is Psalms 23. You have to say amen. amen. And it reads as follows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Uh, he, 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 he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. <laughs> and then, then, then the last verse says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Huh? Amen. We're God, for the people of God, we, um, if I had to use a subject I would use, um, is God your shepherd? Huh? And, and I have an introduction, and I'm going to go into my topic, but I'm going to cut my introduction short because I want you to understand that it's important that we know whether or not God is our shepherd. Huh? When we're living in a time such as this, it's important to know that God is your shepherd. So I ask the question today, is God your shepherd? Uh, and, and when we look at this scripture, we see that, 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 that David has been affiliated with a lot of scriptures throughout the Bible. But this one takes a, a, a more important view. Hmm? And, and if you ask the question why did David write the 23 Psalms, I would say he wanted people or children of God or his flock to understand that the Lord is always present Amen. with his people and with those that follow him. See, and and that is humans of ourselves, or we ourselves, who is the ones that isolate ourselves from Christ. And what you saying, preacher? You see, every time something comes up, instead of us running to Christ, we run from Christ. And, 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 and I get so excited, I sometimes want to skip over everything just to get to the point because I, I understand what this scripture is saying to me. And it's saying to me, the Lord is my shepherd. So as we go into the, 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 the scripture, let, let's, let's start right there with the first verse. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. See, in describing the Lord as a shepherd, David wrote out his own experience because he had spent some time as a shepherd early years of his life caring for sheep. If that you can find in 1 Samuel 16, 10, and 11. See, sheep are completely dependent on the shepherd for provision, guidance, and protection. See, the New Testament calls Jesus the good shepherd in John 10 and 11. The great shepherd in Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. And the chief shepherd in 1 Peter 5 and 7. If the Lord is, God is our shepherd, then we are his sheep. Not all of us. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> Are his sheep who can say this. Despite its worldwide popularity, the song is not for everyone. It is for those who has actually received them by a definite act of faith. Are his sheep. You see, and I know folks saying, what are you talking about, preacher? Uh, 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 all of us can say the Lord is our shepherd, and we can. And, 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 and the Lord is with all of us. 
But when, 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 when we need to go to the Lord, we need to know that we know that he's our shepherd. See, sheep for those who actually believe on him they are called his sheep you see uh, we can we can proclaim Christ huh but 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 if we don't know him, it don't work for us. Huh? Now, now, now. His grace is sufficient for all of us. But his word is effective for all of those that believe and live by his word and his will. See, so all of us can't call the Lord as my shepherd. Huh? I, 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 if you follow Christ, if you take him as your personal savior, if you live according to his word, then you can say the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Huh? Now notice. That this song does not say I shall not need. In Matthew 6, Jesus makes it clear that God is going to provide for all our physical needs. And we should even, shouldn't even worry about that. But Psalms 23, however, says, I shall not want. That's speaking to our desire. It is saying not only can God take care of my physical needs, but it says that God can also fulfill me and he can satisfy my heart. So what are you saying? I'm saying that he can't take he can take care of your physical needs, but he also can take care of your spiritual needs. Anything you need, God is able to provide. See, the word won't in today's text means to lack, decrease, empty, or run dry. So when David said, I shall not want, he is saying two things. One, there are areas in my life that only God can fulfill. See, 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 see. I, I don't know about you, but I do know that there are some areas in my life that my wife can't fulfill, that my children can't fulfill, that my best friends can't fulfill. That even my sticking close buddies can't fulfill. And only God will be able to fulfill it. And, 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 and as being one of his children, I know he will fulfill it. Number two is, we have to say I've made a decision. Not to desire anything outside of the scope of what God wants for me. Well, that's a lot to say. Uh, we know we want a lot of things. But see, 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 when, when, when we're not wanting, it's because we know whatever we need, God has already supplied. So we can stand and say, hey, I don't desire this and I don't want that because whatever I need, God already knows. God has already supplied it. And if he hasn't, he will, huh? So, so, so the Lord is my shepherd. 
<laughs> he protects me. He leads me. He give me provisions. And he take care of me in every way that is needed. So I don't need to want for anything because he's already got it. <laughs> mm. The second thing says he's making me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. Now, when we hear that he makes me lie down in green pastures, we think about Uh, a cattle pasture, huh? Where 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 the grass is green and tall, and cattle just go through there, and, uh, eat all he want, come on, move along and eat some more. But see, in Israel back in those days, they they they, they had hills, <laughs> and hills. Then grow no pastures like that. But because of the season and certain times of the year, the rain and the wind and the moisture, little sprouts would grow up. And then the shepherd would lead his sheep huh, to those little patches. Because if he didn't lead them there, uh, 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 they would starve to death. So, so back then, pastures wasn't what we think they are. You see, just like the 23rd song in the second verse, David is referring to those dry seasons. When he talks about the pastors uh, 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 for the sheep, huh? But not just in the environment, he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures, but it's also for our lives. See, He, the, the, the good shepherd does not lead us to luscious green cattle pastures where we have everything in abundance. Uh-uh. God leads us along the right path through the little sprouts giving us just enough for today. Tomorrow, he will lead us along other paths. Huh? <laughs> to supply our daily needs. Some days he may bless us with a lot of that little pasture. And other days there may only be a little. But what I like about it is there will always be enough for what we need. See, a, pa a, 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 a shepherd would never lead his sheep to a rapidly flowing river. Why? It, it would be too dangerous and loud, causing the sheep to be frightened. See, God doesn't want this for us. He longed to give us peace. Rest. Recompose us that we get ourselves together. So he take us to where the water is pure, clear, and almost motionless. So we can refresh ourselves in him. It's a place where we can slow down. You know, some of us move so quick we can't even hear God speaking. 
Uh, we always busy. We don't have time to meditate and, 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 and suck in the goodness of the Lord, huh? Uh, but be quiet and, and still and with him and experience his deep, here we go, pure love intimacy. And we can do it intimately when we're in a quiet place. A still place. And as our shepherd serving now and then, see, we wonder, but every now and then, he got to lead us to this quiet place where we can hear the voice of the Lord, where, where, where we, we be, 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 be able to uh, 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 receive his love and his compassion that he has for us. See, because the waters is so calm, we can even step into the living water. <laughs> and a wade around a little fuller, emerging ourselves in his grace and quenching our thirst. Huh? His invitation to drink of his peace it's found in Isaiah 55 and 1. It says, which says, everyone who thirsts, come to me. Huh? Come to the water. So therefore, if we look at it, he gives us what we need and when we need it. See, a good shepherd God, the Lord guided David to green pastures. That is, he provided well for David, giving him abundance, rest, and peace. Huh? And, and, and that's what the Lord does for his flock, his sheep. He makes sure that they have abundance, they have rest and peace. And, 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 and in order to, 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 to be effective in the work of the law, you got to have some rest. Huh? Then you got to be filled with some nourishment. A lot of us want to go get a little bit and run on. Say, I'm ready. And the devil waiting to knock the hell out you. Yes. Huh? But if we go stand in a time such as this, yes. we gonna need to be nourished. Yes, and we gonna need to have the full armor of God on. Yes. We can't take half of it and think we gonna make it. Yes. We can't take part of it and think we gonna make it. But we got to, we got to, we got to have the full armor of God on us if we plan to make it. You see the very third verse I say, I shall not lack vitality because he restores my soul. Huh? I shall not lack moral directions because he lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Huh? See, 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 I, I can be vigorated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God restores me. When I've been beaten and knocked down and can't get myself together, and they done call me everything but a child of God. And it seemed like all the good I try to do, the enemy tried to make it mad. But I tell you something, if you're God's sheep, he will restore you. He would give you the strength you need. He would give you the boldness to keep on running. He would give you the power to stand in the midst of your trials and tribulations. He will restore your soul. And, and, and if we stop trying to do everything for ourselves and let the Lord direct our path, some of the trash, trouble, and hell that you go through, 
you wouldn't have to go through. You can't blame God for where you chose to go. But if you let him lead you, direct you, guide you, protect you, he would take you all the way from earth to eternity. See, yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall feel no evil. And we're going to stop right there. Huh? Yea, though, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil. See, the God we serve, or our shepherd, don't always keep trouble, hardships, and sorrow from coming our way. But there's one thing I can tell you, that he will be with us through all of it. Huh? Yes, he will. You know, in our lives, we're going to have some ups and downs. We're going to have some hardships. And if you ain't had that, you better ask yourself a question. Is the Lord your shepherd? Huh? Because as long as the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to have some trials and tribulations. You're going to have some ups and some downs. You have some times where you feel like throwing the towel in. But, but, but the word tells me that I shouldn't worry about it because he's with me. And I heard folks use this time, if he take me to it, he can take me through it. Wonderful. But you got to know that either way it turns out, all things work. For the good of them that love the law. Huh? So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying if the Lord is your shepherd, no matter what happens, no matter which way it goes, it becomes a win-win situation. So, 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 if we allow him, Guide us and keep us. When we go through the shadow of death and death, the shadow ain't always directly death. You see, we can, we can deal with some of the things of shadow of death. Huh? What are you saying, preacher? Or oh, we can deal with sickness. We can deal with uh, 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 aches and pains and, 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 and financial trouble. But then when it comes to death, it frightens us a little bit. And, 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 and it put a sting on us. So, so we need God because it's only God that is able to take us through death to eternal victory. Huh? What you saying, preacher? Even though we go through the shadows sometimes, we got to prepare ourselves for the eternal. I'm saying that there will be a day when, 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 when we can't miss this appointment. There will be a day when, 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 when we got to lay down this temple and try to get to the other side, to the brand new temple. We got to have Jesus to be able to make it through the shadow of death to the tunnel to eternity. Huh? So we got to know. Is the Lord our shepherd? Our shepherd? Huh? Then the word says, I rod and I stand. They comfort me. See, traditionally, shepherd carry a rod and a staff. The rod is heavy. And it got a little curve to it. And, 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 and with that, 
the shepherd could sting or even kill an attacking beast. Hmm? And the staff was the shepherd crook, which he used to assist. <laughs> this is what this say, his sheep. Huh? But let's make it clear. Sometimes. We get out of the direction in which we're supposed to go. And just like the sheep, when they wander all for straight, the shepherd huh, used the staff. Snatch him on back in. And we as children of God, sometimes we stray away. We slide to the left. And we slide to the right. And sometimes we even turn back. Huh? But, 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 see, even in that, the more we get away with it, the more we think we can do it. Because we think ain't nobody watching. But as God is your shepherd, when you start leaning to the left or leaning to the right and thinking you're getting away with it, he takes that rod and stab and he snatch you back in. Uh, because he cares for his sheep. He cares what happens to his sheep. He loves you so much uh, that he won't let you but go so far uh, before he got to chastise you uh, and bring you back into the fold of things. In verse 5, say, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. See, a lot of times when we, when we hear that, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy, we may be thinking of physical table. But it don't always. Huh? Uh, uh, we may think it's always physical food, but it don't always have to be physical food. You see, preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies, <laughs> it, it helps me to understand that in the midst of all my enemies, <laughs> they try to knock me down. Stump on top of me. Pull me down. Talk about me like a dog. Ain't never got nothing good to say about me. But, but, but the scripture tells me that in the midst of all of my enemies, I can enjoy the things that God has prepared for me as his servant. And all they can do to me is what? Look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They try to hurt me, but the more they try to hurt me, the higher he lift me. And I can enjoy all that he has for me. I can enjoy the things he has prepared for me. I can enjoy the life that he set before me, even in the midst of my enemies. Hallelujah. You can't stop me. You can't turn me around. God got me. God got me. And I'm going to be all right. Mm. 
See, we have to understand. We can enjoy all that God has prepared for us by sharing the blood of Jesus. Huh? That washed away our sin. That, 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 that made full atonement for us. Huh? We can enjoy it. So I don't understand people saying, I got him. Every time somebody tries to say something about you, every time you think somebody is trying to abuse or misuse you, you get all upset, worrying about what they talking about. You even sometimes get on the phone, start talking to your friend. Child, I ain't done nothing to them. I don't know why they're doing that to me. But let me tell you something. If the Lord is your shepherd, you ain't worrying about that. <laughs> because that is worth not even a hill of beans. If the Lord is your shepherd, every time you hear somebody say something about you, try to do something to you, you can say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> because in the midst of all of my enemies, I can still enjoy <laughs> Your love, your power, your praise, I still can enjoy all that you have for me. And they can't do nothing to me but look at me. See, when the Lord is really your shepherd, you got to understand this. Come on, Spirit. When the Lord is your shepherd, you got to know that they can't do nothing to you. They may destroy this physical body, but they can't harm your soul. And when it's all over, that's the only thing that's going to count. So I tell you today, keep your hands in the master plan. See, the shepherd anoint the head of the sheep to soothe the scratches and the wound. For priests, the anointing all speaks of consecration to their works. Huh? For kings, the anointing oil is associated with a coronation. Followers is anointed with the Holy Spirit. The moment he receives the Savior, this anointing, Guarantee him the teaching ministry of God, the Spirit. See? And, 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 and with that, that anointing, it doesn't matter. Huh? What man may say or what man may do. See, see, the, the song says, anointing, fall on me. Songwriter says, anointing breaks the yoke. See, see, you can have people that sing well, that talk well. You can have people that even got everything they think in place. But, but without the anointing, the yoke can't be broken. Huh? But when you got a person that has the anointing, all they got to do is speak the word. And something would take place. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't deal with the devil <laughs> acting like you got something. And he was here before you got here. Don't come with, to the devil with no junk. Because he's been to knock you out the box. But when you got the anointing, that old devil knows that you got Jesus in you. 
and he gets afraid when he sees you coming. He, he gets frightened when you start speaking life into your brothers and sisters, even into yourself. You can speak life with the anointing. You can speak to your situation with the anointing and the power of the Lord will rise up. And you see, it's funny. Because after he anoints us, the songwriter said, my cup runneth over. When we think of all the riches of grace which we have in Christ Jesus, we burst forth with the gratefulness Acknowledgement that my cup runneth over. I like that because, you know, that was an old saying that in the word that says uh, he restored the wealth of the unbeliever for the believer. Huh? So, 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 when you look at it, you can't help but having a cup. That runs over. Hey! Huh? Hey! What you saying, preach? Yeah. See, of all the joy that God has given, hey! it is so much that it bubbles over hey! on to somebody else hey! that can get some of that joy. Hey! <laughs> of all the love <laughs> that God has given me, <laughs> ah, it just bubbles over. <laughs> When I look back over my life <laughs> and I think things over, <laughs> yeah, I begin to realize <laughs> that my good days <laughs> outweigh my bad days. <laughs> and that's why I got so much joy <laughs> that my cup <laughs> run it over. <laughs> Others can receive the blessings that I have because I have so much. <laughs> It's like a water stream falling down. All you got to do is be in the right place at the right time, and you'll receive some of this blessing. Yeah, my cup run it over because he won't let me look bad to the enemy. He won't let me look like a failure to the enemy. The Lord wants me to shine. The Lord wants me to have joy. The Lord wants me to have life. And he wants me to have it abundantly. So my cup runs over when I think about where he brought me from. My cup runs over when I think about how he kept me. My cup runs over when I see that nobody can do me like Jesus. My cup runs over. Let's put it this way. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power has no boundary. See, 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 see. That is known unto man. For out of his intellect Infinite riches he gives through Jesus Christ. And he gives, huh? And he gives, and he gives even more. So if he's giving and giving and giving, and giving my cup can't help but run it over. Yeah. I tell you, if you know Jesus, if he's your shepherd, your cup shall run over. Yeah. 
see. Now the first four. verses of the scripture David talks about where he's been led huh Lord my shepherd shall not want he leading me green pasture he leading me sad to still water but then when we get to this verse five and six it start talking about a reversal. Huh? David say, now that I'm feeling, now that I'm confident, now that I'm uh 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 know that I know that I know. He says that surely goodness and mercy ain't guiding me, but it's following me. All the days of my life. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something to have grace and mercy following you all the days of your life. You know you don't deserve it, but you have it anyhow. Because while you are the shepherd, the sheep of the shepherd, which is Christ Jesus, huh? So the Lord is my shepherd, and because he is my shepherd, uh, he's given me grace and mercy. When I stumble on this side, grace and have mercy, Lord, and pick me back up and help me to keep going on. And then, and then, and then, and then, when I know I've done wrong, and, 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 and I go to God for forgiveness, uh, mercy say, Lord, uh, give him another chance. Uh, let him keep on keeping on. So I come to tell you today, uh, you need to know uh, that whether or not uh, the Lord uh, is your shepherd, uh, you need to know uh, and stop worrying uh, about what this world gives to us. Huh? Because if we got Jesus, huh? everything huh? is going to be all right. People killing, people stealing, people hurting, people taking advantage of, people don't love no more. People don't respect no more. But I come to tell you, if God is your shepherd, you ain't got to worry. Because he's prepared us. He's prepared the way all the way from earth to heaven. I'm glad that I got to know Jesus for myself. I'm glad that I stopped worrying uh, about what man uh, had to say about me. Uh, I'm glad uh, that I know, uh, that I know uh, that he is uh, my keeper, uh, my provider, uh, my protector, uh, my healer, uh, my restorer, uh, my rock uh, in the weary land. Yeah! Yeah! And he all right. And he all right. Do you love him? Do you know him? Do you care? Yeah. The Lord is. The Lord is. My shepherd. Yeah. Talk about me. As much as you please. But my shepherd, he got me. Do what you want to scandalize my name. But my shepherd, he got me. He let grace and mercy follow me always, all the days, all of my life. I ain't worrying about you. I ain't scared of you. It doesn't matter what you say about me. Because the Lord, I said the Lord, I said the Lord, he is my shepherd. My 
brothers and sisters. It's a good thing to know that the Lord is your shepherd. Huh? People are mean. People are cruel. People are bitter. People don't want you to have more than they have. But I come to tell you, if the Lord is your shepherd, you got everything you need. Huh? You know, the songwriter said, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. But I want to help you with that. God do put people in our lives, huh, sometimes, to help us get to the next level. But I think the songwriter was saying, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Because all of you folks who laugh in my face and try to stab me in the back, I ain't got to worry about you. Because I got Jesus. And I got Jesus, and that's enough. He will keep me. He will protect me. He will hold me up when you try to knock me down. He will take me higher. If I hold on uh, to his unchanging hand, I come to tell you today, God is real, and you better make him your shepherd. Stop looking for fame, glory from mankind, and start looking for Jesus. Humble yourself. That the Lord will exalt you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Ain't God all right? I don't need no music. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I've seen folks try to tear me apart, but Jesus stood by my side when my friends walked away and they turned their backs on me. He stood right by my side. And I ain't ashamed today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't need nobody in this place to validate who I am. God has made me who I am. You can take it or you can leave it. But God has made me just who I am. And I said, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. The doors of the church is open. There's anybody. Anybody that's tired of playing around with people and ready to get to know Jesus for themselves, the doors are open. Now is the time. Today is the day. Huh? There is no shame in getting to know Jesus while you're still in the land of the living. Is there one? Is there one? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now is the time. He'll turn your life around. He'll turn your midnight into day. Yes, he will. Is there another? 
Is there another? Let's stop worrying about what we're going through and start worrying about that we're getting through. Getting through to the people that need to be gotten to. That they may get to know who Jesus is while it's still time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I know we had a protocol, but brothers and sisters, let's just stay where we are, and I'll pray from here. Is there another that need prayer? If there's another, you ain't got to come up. You can step out in the aisle. Huh? Hallelujah. Ain't no shame in wanting to get to know Jesus. I'm telling you, people, every time we turn around, somebody's gone. <laughs> and since they're going, they're going somewhere. <laughs> so we need to know that we know we know <laughs> that we're going to be all right when we get to the other side. <laughs> Ain't nobody in this building got a heaven or hell to put you in. Hey, 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 hey. They say what? You got to worship the Lord in spirit. And they that worship him got to worship him in spirit and in truth, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That man can't do it for you. Your mama grace can't do it for you. Your mama prayers can't do it for you. You got to know him for yourself. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. tell y'all ladies today it's according to your faith that life can change for you you confess your sins or whatever and believe in him as your savior I'm telling you no matter what you're going through God is able to deliver you now don't let nobody fool you that he can't God is able to deliver you and whatever you're going through, if you just cast your cares upon him, he would take care of you. And I say this to say that. Cast your cares to Jesus. And I tell you, he loves you enough that he would see you through. The word said there's no problem too hard for God. He can handle it. But you got to believe it. See, a lot of folks come to the altar, they want prayer, and they carry that same problem that they brought to God. Right back out there where they came from. But if you're casting your care into Jesus' hands, leave it there. You know, I grew up learning that once I put it in God's hands, it's going to be all right. Huh? I, I start claiming it. I start naming it. I start thanking him for it, just like it's already has happened. Even though I don't know how it's going to happen, even though I don't see how it will happen, but I know if it's in God's hands, he'll make a way out of no way. So I say this so when we pray, just give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. And he'll take a little and make plenty. He'll take nothing and make something. Huh? He'll take nobody and have them to teach everybody. Yes, he will. Let us bow our heads in prayer. And one more chance. Is there another? Don't be ashamed of the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let's give a hand to Sister Clark coming by Christian experience. And I, they've already told you somebody to be with you, right? Get with you. Okay, Don. Amen. We want to thank God for you coming. We want to thank God for having the heart to 
come and join the Third Baptist Church family. Yeah. And don't think we take it for granted because my sister, you could have gone anywhere else, but your heart and God saw fit that you come to Third Baptist. And for this, we say thank you. All right, amen. Let's give another hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is still in charge. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, the creator of mankind, the author and the finisher of our lives, we humbly come today, God, just saying thank you. Thank you for being our shepherd. Thank you for being our keeper. Thank you for being our protector. Thank you for being our provider. We thank you today, God, because we realize you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Even in our foolishness, God, you kept us. And if we were to be real about it, Father, if we were to tell the truth about it, when we look back over our lives, we should have been dead a long time ago. But you made death behave and allowed us to run on just a little while longer. And for this, God, we say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for grace and mercy. Oh, God, touch, heal, deliver, and restore your people. Now, God, I don't know why they're at the altar today, but I do know whatever it is, you can handle it. So I come boldly in the name of Jesus, saying, God, whatever your children are faced with, whatever your children are going through, whatever troubles or trials and tribulation, whatever storm they're facing and walking through now, we ask you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to give them what they need, that they may have a testimony, to tell somebody that God will deliver, God will restore, God will renew. God, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Touch their hearts. Touch their lives. Touch their minds. Touch their souls. Give them, oh God, what they need. I don't need to know, but as long as they cast it upon you, I believe in my sanctified soul. You will make everything all right. We claim it right now in the name of Jesus. We say it's already done in the name of Jesus. We say, God, God, thank you for what you already done. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you, God, for making a way. Thank you, God, for opening doors. Thank you, God. We believe it, we receive it, and we claim it right now. In the name of Jesus. We just want to shout hallelujah for what you've already done. Hallelujah for making a way. And God, we will continue every day to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name. We claim it, declare it, and decree it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All minds are hearts and clear. Thank God. Ambassador Parker for being here and Reverend or Clemens for being in the place today. And thank you for your presence. You could have gone anywhere else, but you made it your effort and your business to be at Third Church. And for this, we want to thank you. Uh, if all minds and hearts are clear, let us bow our heads for dismissal. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that everybody say, Amen, 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 amen. and Amen. Go in peace. Hallelujah.